Hello, this video will explain Pascal's law and its derivation. Let's take a tank filled with water. Pascal's law states that pressure at any point in a static fluid is the same in all the directions. This means that any two points that are shown in this tank will experience the same pressure in all the directions no matter what. In the same tank, a square liquid element is selected and the pressures from all the directions are shown. Here, the red arrow represents the pressure on the x-axis, the green arrow represents the pressure on the y-axis and similarly, the blue arrow represents the pressure on the z-axis. Let us now take this element separately and analyze it further. See how the arrows represent different directions in a 3D Cartesian system. It is already known that the hydraulic pressure is calculated by P is equal to F by A where F is the force applied to the element and A is the cross-sectional area of the element. In the equilibrium condition, all the forces will be cancelled. In other words, the net forces are zero. Hence, summation of F is equal to zero. Due to this reason, the rectangular element is cut into two pieces and the lower diagonal part is selected. This element will be in the shape of a wedge. The wedge shaped element is also known as a right angled triangular prism. Let the dimensions of the triangular prism be dx, dy and dz. There are a few assumptions about Pascal's law. The first is the density of the liquid is constant. The second one is the density is rho is equal to mass by volume where m is the mass of the element and v is the volume of the element. The third one is for simplicity a 2D study is carried out. The dimension of the third element of the prism is taken as unity which means dz is equal to 1. The fourth one is the area of the prism from the diagram is a prism is equal to half dx dy. Volume of the prism is given as V prism is equal to A prism dz. For simplicity, let us switch to the 2D view of the triangular prism. Also, we shall indicate the weight of the prism through the center of mass or the centroid. From the Pascal's law, the pressure force is calculated by F is equal to P times A. Hence, for x-axis, fx is equal to px times a, which is equal to px multiplied by dy multiplied by dz, which is again equal to px dy. Similarly, for the y-axis, fy is equal to py times a, which is equal to py multiplied by dx multiplied by dz, which is again equal to py dx. Also, the weight of the wedge-shaped fluid element can be given as W is equal to M times G, which is equal to Rho times V times G. After rearranging, it becomes Rho into G into V. Hence, W is equal to half Rho G dx dy. Before continuing the derivation, we must resolve the components of the prism. The inclination is theta between the normal force Fn and the horizontal line which is shown. At equilibrium, that is Fx is equal to 0, Px dy minus P cos theta ds is equal to 0. Since cos theta is equal to dy by ds, hence dy is equal to ds cos theta. Substituting these values, the equation will finally be px dy minus p dy is equal to 0. Finally, p is equal to px. 
for the second case at equilibrium f y is equal to zero, which means p y d x minus p sin theta d s minus w equal to zero, or p y d x minus p sin theta d s minus half rho g d x d y is equal to zero. In this equation, the third term becomes zero as the value will be minimal. From the diagram, sin theta is equal to dx by ds. Hence, dx is equal to ds sin theta. Finally, the equation will be reduced to py dx minus p dx is equal to zero, which is p is equal to py. With a similar process. P is equal to Pz. After combining all the results, P is equal to Px is equal to Py is equal to Pz. Hence, Pascal's law is proved.